Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be discussing my Zephyr Blade build in Stranger of Sword City. First off, in case you saw the name of the video and were confused, these are not the names of classes in Stranger of Sword City. These are my personal names for what I consider the multi-class build I put together for each of these characters. Just want to put that out there. So what is a Zephyr Blade and how do you put one together? Because of the role that this character plays in my party, another name for this build could be a duelist, since the entire idea centered around this character was to be able to use the Samurai's Carnage abilities to deal the most damage possible. However, that's really just the role he plays in let's say, a lineage battle or a boss fight. When tackling just groups of enemies in dungeons, the role of this character can be single target assassination, or it could be group attacking using the slash three active skill. For this reason, I felt that Duelist just didn't cover enough of what this character does to be a proper build name, but I feel that Zephyr Blade kind of goes with the whole theme. So it's kind of, you know, a wind that cuts, which could be thought of as either thorough lashing of strikes or interpreted as a wind that cuts as you move through it, which is the theme I like to think of, of what's happening when using the carnage abilities with this character. And before I describe the build in detail, I just want to preface by saying that of my six build videos, this is the easiest to put together. Some of the others can be completed in around the same amount of time without too much more effort, but some of them are also very labor intensive, but with rewards for putting in that effort. So let's begin. I chose to start off with the samurai for this character, focusing on strength and vitality pretty much equally, but putting the greatest focus on agility in order to get the dual wield penalty very low. One more point and I could have gotten rid of the penalty entirely, but I didn't want to give up any more strength or vitality in order to accomplish that. So that's a point that's always been intended for once this character surpasses that original final level that I put into Samurai. As with all of my builds, I took this character up to level 30 in their first class in order to maximize the number of skill points I was able to distribute before the first class change. If you do not intend to replay the game multiple times in New Game Plus, then I highly recommend doing the same. The skills I had this character take from Samurai were the dual wield skill, the slash three skill for grinding purposes and just trash mob encounters. And then depending on how dangerous the opponent is, either carnage front or carnage back. If I know potentially taking a hit could kill this character outright, then I'll opt for carnage front just to be safe. I then had this character level to 16 as a fighter, which only required a single level since they changed from Samurai at level 30. And the reason for fighter is myriad. The main reason is for the invincible heart skill so that they can potentially survive a lethal hit when using the carnage skills. But the reason I didn't choose to go into fighter after night and just aim for the skill token was so I could have the option to use heavy swing, which is an incredibly potent skill when dual wielding, as well as potentially open up gear options if in their final class I were to just run out of good weapon options. After that, I had them change class into Knight and level up to 21 in order to get the secret defense skill to prevent paralyzation and critical hits, and also potentially for the defensive training skill. And just to be clear, the reason for this skill is not to improve the actual defense of this character, though it is intended for damage reduction in that that is one of the innate features of defense training. But when dueling, your defense becomes zero. So this will not reduce damage normally. After this, I had them change classes to a ranger and level up to 14, primarily for the skill slot, but also for hunter's eye in case I didn't have any other characters using it. 
Next, I had them change classes to Dancer and level up to 14, while reaching level 13 in any class is worthwhile in order to get that skill slot. Dancer's purpose is actually a functional one, in that we want our Zephyr Blade to always have Weapon Trick in case they need to assassinate a back row enemy. Now at this point you may be wondering why for Fighter, Ranger, and Dancer I leveled to one above the actual level where they learn the final skill that I wanted for each of those classes. And the reason is honestly just that prior to level 18 these levels are very easy to come by so leveling to 16 or leveling to 14 just means that when they change classes there's a difference between starting at level 8 instead of level 7 as a knight or starting at level 7 instead of level 6 as a dancer or ninja that's the whole reason and finally we change to ninja the ultimate class for this build. The reason for ending on ninja instead of samurai is that ninja just had more skills than the dancer that I wanted for this character. Ninja allows this character to equip katanas and have evasive training as well as cicada shell which just like immortal heart could potentially save this character during a duel. Those are the reasons I chose ninja instead of samurai as the final but you know you could do it the other way and i'm sure it wouldn't be a huge difference but for me it just was more important to have the extra evasion be innate than supplementary for this character's equipment loadout i'm going with the strongest katanas i have as well as a full set of gear that increases their chance to hit and their evasion. Due to the secondary effect of the evade training, this character would actually have higher evasion if they were to just strip naked, but then they wouldn't have the extra chance to hit, which is kind of a delicate balance to strike there, since the higher level you get, the higher the enemy's evasion gets as well. So giving up hit is something to consider. However, an interesting way to play this character is to strip them naked, as I said before, and then have them equip the hammer skill from knight or fighter, and then dual wield Gilius shields. So this would give a massive evasion bonus, though also giving a massive hit reduction. But it is a way to maximize your evasion with this build. And it's something that I have tried and it does work, but the reason I don't generally use it is because of that huge hit reduction. I just did a few dungeon runs where entire rounds went by without this character being able to hit anything. So if you go that route, keep that in mind. This, this is really something that you only want to do if you're using buffs to increase the hit rate by a lot. Now let's see them in action. First off, as I mentioned before, of primary importance is having this character use their slash 3 skill from Samurai, which allows them to hit three entire rows of enemies every round, and since they're dual wielding, they hit them twice. So it's great for helping knock out big groups of enemies. Next up is using the assassinate skill. So this is something I generally do if there is a leader enemy hiding in the back row that I want to make sure it goes down really fast before the battle ends. And at the same time, I'm not fully confident that a duel would be the best way to end it. So that's when you want to use Assassinate. But that's not really what this character is built up to do. If I really wanted to maximize damage, then I would use Heavy Strike instead and equip a pair of axes instead of the katanas. The reason that I wanted katanas instead of axes is that they have that innate hit chance added on, whereas axes actually reduce your chance to hit. And like I said, with this character, it's more about getting in more hits, since the theme of this character is hitting as many times as possible, as opposed to a couple of really nice big hits. Though, if that's what you're looking for, do take a look at my assassin build video, because that's what they're all about. And finally, we come to our carnage skills. 
the entire basis for the character. So first I'm going to show Carnage Front in action since it's the safer dueling skill. Using this one we're able to get some good hits in without being too worried about getting hit back. But if we do, then we just stop attacking, no harm no foul. Now let's look at Carnage Back. Carnage Back is an incredibly dangerous skill. If you don't have enough measures in place, then Carnage Back can get this character killed. Let's see what happens if I get too confident here. Get a couple of nice hits, but now we're taking those hits and he's gone. A lot of work for a lot of nothing. But this is not a single character game. We're not soloing our way through these dungeons. This is a party-based dungeon crawling RPG. So let's see what happens when we add in some assistance. If you're watching these videos out of order, you may be familiar with the build that this other character is using, which allows me to quickly pump up this character's evasion. Now on the next round, we set up our defenses, down a holy shield for an extra hit there, and now let's try that again. Much cleaner this time, but obviously there's still something missing here. So now let's bring morale into this. We've got two good options here, so let's take a look at both. Sky Dragon provides an additional buff to our hit and evasion, and Dragon Fist provides a hit and evasion reduction to the enemy. Both are gained by giving bloodstones to Ryu at the stranger base. If one seems more your speed than the other, pick them up how you wish. So we can use our morale skill to either help with our buffing or with our debuffing. And now we can feel relatively confident in our Zephyr Blade using Carnage back. So they'll either fight to the death or until our Zephyr Blade has attacked enough times. That's it for this video. I hope that through your journey through Stranger of Sword City, you consider applying or modifying this build to your liking, as it is relatively easy to put together and incredibly powerful. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.